In this video, I'm going to teach you how to perfect the wheel route in Madden 22, and not just from Gun Bunch, but we're actually going to teach you how to perfect it from pretty much any formation based on the grid system that Madden has implemented with their zone coverage. Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is Cody. We do videos like this every single day to help you get a little bit better at the game. This is an example of a video that we would do in our Patreon membership, uh, where we do a deep dive on a concept or a deep update on a specific defensive coverage or something like that. We also, in addition to that, have over 20 offensive and defensive eBooks available in our Patreon. So if you want to check that out, um, again, this is just a small example. We obviously go much, much more in detail in the Patreon. There's a link in the description if you want to sign up for it. It's only $10, gets you access to everything. You get all the eBooks, you get all of the, um, and then all of the uh, kind of exclusive breakdowns. And again, this is kind of an example of that. So let's get on the field. Um, I wanted to talk today about a defense or not a defense but an offensive concept and that is the wheel route but understanding why a defense plays it versus why they don't and what you need to look for and it is all dependent upon um the hash mark so i'm going to set a couple of audibles here um just so that we can audible into them the first one is going to be i'm in the new england playbook um we're going to do mesh spot verticals and then i don't know if i have inside cross in here or not i can't remember um, now we'll just leave it like this. This is fine. And then I could even do let me see here. Oh, I'm in Detroit. I'm not in uh, New England, uh, but it's fine. The same basic plays are in both a couple little nuances. But anyways, PA shot post is the play and you just want your best receiver here. OK, um, so what you're going to do is you're going to come out in PA shot post. Now, the what you the, the, the real trick and the real secret sauce, quote unquote, of the wheel route is understanding how the hash marks work and understanding how the wheel routes work um, as it applies to hash marks. And I'm gonna start by teaching this with a hitch route. Um, and so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna play, um, we're just gonna go down and um, and we're gonna play some, some cover two. Actually, let me grab that and put in my audibles just to make it a little bit easier on us. Because the shaded down vert hook is the best zone. Um, not shaded down, but shaded down, shaded outside is, is what a lot of people will do. Um, and then, you know, obviously a five yard vert hook is, is, is decent as well. And we're gonna show you what you can do offensively to counter this. So anyways, we just, I just wanna get the vert hooks on the field here. So we've got two vert hooks on the left. We got a vertical on the left, we got a vertical on the right. Now what we're gonna do first is show you this via a hitch. So I'm gonna shade my coverage down and then you can recloud these guys on the outside. You could not, it's up to you, okay? But I just wanna show you how this works. So if you notice, Scotty Miller is inside the numbers. Now to make it really easy, I'm actually gonna isolate uh, Scotty Miller and, um, and Mike Evans. So we're just gonna move Gawain over, just get him out of the way. And what you're gonna notice is that he's inside the numbers, right? So the vert hooks principle this year, and it was kind of similar last year, is if it's inside the numbers, they're gonna basically play, a vert hook is gonna play from where Bethel is right about to where Jones is, maybe just a little bit more to the outside of there, okay? So what you'll see is the vert hook will defend that hitch, okay? So now, if the route goes on outside of the numbers, that is where the vert hook will not cover it. And I'm gonna show you that by using um, a motion concept. So again, I'm in Tampa 2, I'm gonna shade my coverage outside and underneath. And then we're gonna put two two uh, reclouds recloud our outside guys, and here's what you want to check for. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the tight end on a flat, and we're gonna put Godwin on a hitch, and we're just gonna motion him to the right, and we're gonna snap him right after he gets on the outside edge of the numbers. So we just want him to get on the outside edge right there, snap the ball. Watch how that vert hook does not cover him. See how he drifts inside, and the route is open. Now the same thing applies if I move my trips to the short side, and I'll show you that real quick um, on the hitch on the hitch, and this is going to help kind of explain in a second how the wheel works. Okay, so uh, we're going to go down to cover two again in the same exact setup where we're doing two vert hooks, and we got them shaded outside and underneath. Now notice that Scotty Miller is outside of the numbers, right? So again, we're going to move Godwin. Now it might be a little bit more. Um, it might not be as good, but it should be fine here. And you see again, he's outside the numbers, right? Watch the vert hook. He does not play him. He drifts inside. And as you can see, I can easily complete that. 
The same basic principle applies to wheel routes even more so, okay? And I'm gonna show you. So for first illustration is gonna be our running back. So you can see here that my trips is to the uh, short side of the field. So if I was to take my running back and put him on a wheel, you'll notice that this vert hook is gonna play it really, really well because why? Because the wheel route breaks inside of the numbers, okay? And to illustrate this, we're gonna um, do this route combo right here. Just gonna block our tight end, flat Scotty Miller, out route Mike Evans, and motion Sky over. You don't need high route master, you don't need anything to do this, okay? Um, but what you're gonna see is this vert hook on the right, if I try to throw this, he's gonna drift and run in the passing lane. Now again, the running back route is super good, but as you can see, he's kind of in the general area of the field. Now, I want you to look back to the short side of the field, and this is what makes PA Shot Wheel so good, in my opinion. And we're going to go to Bunch in just a second and explain it um, uh, even more so. But if you look to the left side, that wheel route is going to cut. Notice he's going to cut outside the numbers, right? So now you'll see here that we can throw that. But it does get a little choppy on the short side with trips just because of the spacing is not the best. Um, so now what I want to do is I want to go to the gun bunch. So let's go to gun bunch and we're going to take a look at the play verticals out of gun bunch. So just going to uh, flip my defense. You don't even have to flip it to be honest. We'll just use it like this. It's fine. Um, but now if you notice my tight end is to the wide side of the field. So the vert hook should do a better job at playing him. So as you can see here, we're just going to kind of set up our coverage or whatever, but you'll see this vert hook on the right really do a good job of take that away now again didn't quite completely take it away because that's how good a wheel route is but he's much much more there than he's about to be with a flip of our uh our bunch so all i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna flip the bunch and you're gonna see how good this wheel route is when you flip it so short side bunch and what you're gonna see is if you notice that tight end wheel is outside the numbers, right? So now I can kind of feed that fit fit that in to the outside just like I could out of mesh spot. And we'll show you that mesh spot's a little bit more exaggerated of the same concept. So you'll see here, even with um, mesh spot to the wide side of the field, the tight end is still um, in a position where he's inside the numbers. So what we want to do is again, we want to run our tight end to the short side. Or we just want to focus in on our running back route, which would be wide open. But what you'll see here is now he's to this side of the field. And notice that you can throw this and aggressive catch or cut it off. Obviously, we could have hit our flat as well. So now I want to show you kind of the culmination of everything. And I actually think trips tied in is ironically um, next to maybe gun tight. The best formation for wheels when you actually understand this principle. Because now what you're going to see is I'm going to put my vert hooks down here. And we're actually going to get both wheels open. So how we're going to do that is we're going to out route Evans, flat Miller, and wheel the back. And what you'll notice, and we'll snap him kind of right at the numbers. So on the left side, you'll see he gets outside the numbers. So we can just pass lead the wheel wide open against that cover two coverage. And then on the opposite side, you'll notice that the same basic thing applies. So I'm going to motion Miller, do the wheel, and you see here... But on the right side, as soon as my running back cuts up, you see that guy disappears. Just a simple low ball. You want to aggressive catch it to cut it off. And as you can see, now this is a concept that cannot be defended by a vertical hook on either side of the formation. So now what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to throw purple zones at them as well. So you'll see right here, this is a cover three Mabel with two vert hooks. To me, it's probably, I think personally, one of the better underneath coverages in this game. But it's still going to be the same basic problem. The, the, the vert hooks won't be able to cover this route. So you see right here, you see how I can just throw that and consistently just shred the, the coverage. Now, the best underneath coverage that I think is even potential, like that is even possible in this game is a two curl flats and then either two hard flats or two clouds. Now, in this example, I think it's going to defend the wheels a little better if we have two clouds um and so that's what we're going to show you so we got two purples here and we got two vert hooks and we got two clouds to me this coverage is obviously like i think personally it's crazy to run this but it is something that if someone's desperate and they're trying to stop this play it's what they'll do but what you'll notice is again because of where we throw the route it makes it darn near impossible 
to get to it. And it doesn't, we're not even using Gunslinger for this, right? You're just pass leading the route based off of what the zones do. Now, what about man coverage? You might be interested um, in knowing how this plays against man with two purples. This is a coverage that I see a lot whenever I start throwing wheels. I'm sure that you do as well. What you'll see with this is these purples, um, you're just gonna wait and then low ball it and you're gonna aggressive catch it. So you wanna wait till the wheel passes the purple zone and then you wanna cut it off and you wanna aggressive catch it. I'll show you on the other side. And again, why do we wanna run this with our trips to the uh, wide side of the field? But primarily has nothing to do with our trips. It has everything to do with our running back because we want our running back wheel to break outside of the numbers. If he breaks inside the numbers, it's not as good. So you see right here, low ball, wide open and aggressive catch. This is how you make wheel routes unstoppable. And again, you can do the same exact thing. You can do the same exact thing from bunch. You can do the same exact thing from almost any formation in this game. Once you understand that all you have to do is get the wheel route outside of the numbers. If you get the wheel route outside of the numbers, then they really can't do anything to stop you. And I'll show you real quick here with Bunch. Um, I actually should have left the ball on the other hash. So we'll just respot it, bring it back over here. But what you'll notice with this one more time is, you know, again, we're gonna do the same exact thing. We're gonna play really aggressive underneath coverage. We've got shaded down verts, we got purples, and we have clouds, okay? And what you're gonna see is this tight end route now the running back is not in a great position. Why? Because he's gonna break inside of the number. So the running back's not gonna get open here. But the tight end, you see here, is gonna get open up the seam. And again, I threw that a little bit poorly, but you see the, the route kind of get, getting open later on in the play. Now, my recommendation also with mesh spot, if you take a look real quickly here, again, when the running back is on this side, it's, it's, it's almost impossible to stop this running back route. So you see right here, it just gets so open. Why? Because of where it breaks on the concept. And you can apply this so th like throughout. So let me give you one last example of application of this and then we'll, uh, we'll cut the video off. But I think this last piece is really important. So let's say for example that you are in a short side trips or even a short side bunch scenario. It's a little bit more, I think, helpful if you're in trips. Basically what you're gonna do with this um, and this is a great way to be able to deal with any pressure that you might be getting. Okay, so same thing. We're in that cover two. We've got this. We got this. And then, you know what? Let's just man this guy up on the running back. Okay, this is something that you'll see. What we're going to do is we're going to wheel the running back and we're going to, um, or we're going to go to the play verticals. We're going to out route Mike Evans. We're going to wheel the running back and then we're just going to streak um, Gronkowski. Okay, something simple like this. What you'll notice is this running back will break outside of the numbers and you see he gets that inside leverage and you're able to throw that. So now, like it makes it super difficult, in my opinion, for somebody to blitz you because they, they literally don't have anything that can cover those two routes. Um, not even, I mean, crossman is the best chance you have, but if you're sending, even if you're only sending five and you try to cross man, so for example, we're gonna cross man here, cross man here, and it's gonna look something like this. If, I mean, it just literally takes me putting this dude on a streak and, you know, it toasts this. I mean, just something simple. So this is a really, really, really good concept. Again, it does beat cross me in two, by the way. And I'll just illustrate that real quick. Um, but in our Patreon, we go over this kind of stuff in depth every single week. We have multiple videos. I think we have over 80, uh, over almost 90 um, videos that is just in depth about mechanics of the game and how they work. So if you want to learn all that stuff, again, I'm going to put a link to that in the description. But last little piece here, we'll show you the cross man. So if they cross man to me is the best thing they can do. Um, obviously, if they cross man this, like you can just throw, you know, your tight end or whatever. But just notice, like, once he gets him running, it's still not really good. So that's how you throw wheel routes literally against anything. You'll torch the blitz with this concept. And it's so good. Why? Because there's no zone that really covers that area of the field. Um, especially if you use those pull routes to pull the curl flats out of the way. They don't really cover the wheel.
Thanks for watching the video. If you want to get our Patreon membership, again, there's so much good stuff in there that um, is going to help you become a better player. So I would really encourage you to check it out. We got a full trips tight end, tight end ebook, full bunch ebook, all that stuff. Got over 20 offensive and defensive guides in there. So if you want to check it out, there's a link in the description below and you can go check it out.